I want to speak to James here. It is, it's James, isn't it? When the presenters are up here and when the recipients are receiving their awards, don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets, looking around as though you wished you were anywhere but here. Oh! And if it looked like that, I'm so sorry. But when you come up and present an award, just f***ing get on with it. There we go. <laughs> I'm here in LA. It's so beautiful. Harvey Weinstein has already asked tonight up to his hotel to give him a massage. Harvey Weinstein wanted to come tonight, but uh, he'll settle for whatever potted plant is closest. <laughs> oh, come on! The winner's Kira Knightley. <laughs> and this is a bit of a scoop, exclusive and true. I've just been shagging her solid for the last three days. But in between sessions, we, um, we made a little film, and literally, the minute we finished taping it, I was hanging out the back of her. So, have a watch at this. All right. Hi guys, it's Madison, and I have some sad news. I am no longer going to be saying blue in my videos, like back in my blue kitchen, back in my blue chair. I just think it's time to move on. I'm creating a new setup and everything. I've created some blue kitchen merch so that the blue kitchen can be forever memorialized. So instead, I'm going to do a new intro starting right now. Hey guys, it's Madison. Welcome back to my little corner on the internet where we discuss scams and unethical business practices that are going on. Today, we are talking about James Corden and how he might be completely fake or a rude sellout. But first, before we get into that, if you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze scams and unethical business practices going on on the internet, don't forget to subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up if you like this video. I'm going to be starting a thing where I highlight my favorite comment from the last video in a voiceover. So I'll have Editing Madison add that in right now. The comment I want to highlight today in this video is from Elvin Gear Master Irma. Hopefully I pronounced that right. They've been a really long time viewer of the channel and I appreciate them a lot. And they said, oh no, companies being horrible, exploiting people, say it isn't so. If you wanna be featured in the next video, definitely leave a funny or interesting comment down below. And well, let's get into it. Lately, there's been a lot of news coming out about talk show hosts behind the scenes, particularly Ellen and some horrible things that she's done allegedly, as well as her production team. And I think a lot of people were shocked but also not really. I think a lot of people are starting to feel like talk show hosts and talk shows themselves are becoming a little bit outdated. I mean, you can see with the Lily Singh show how well that did. And overall, I think people are starting to see through this family-friendly, lovable host and bubblegum facade that talk shows have. I mean, just looking at a compilation of talk show hosts laughing is enough to give me nightmares. Do you know what my... <laughs> oh, thank you, it may take me a couple months to... <laughs> Now I'm definitely depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but and you're and she's nervous. So that, that was fun. You can tell they're definitely at least faking their laughs majority of the time. So what else are they faking? Well, there's one talk show host and lovable comedian that I've always wondered about, and that's James Corden. Some people absolutely hate this guy, and some people just love and adore him. But after it was announced that James Corden would be hosting the Monate Gala, yes, which we'll get into, don't worry. Monate makes the best products for both humans and pets. 
an event for a controversial MLM company that has some serious allegations for its products that cause hair loss. Yeah for its company being a pyramid scheme, and most recently, their agreement of voluntary compliance with the Florida Attorney General, which sounds as shady as it is. So why would James Corden agree to be the MC of such a controversial company? That entire situation made me want to dive a little bit deeper into the life of James Corden and if he's really as perfect as he makes himself appear. Most people know James Corden for his role in The Late Late Show, where his philosophy is apparently eerily similar to Ellen's. Instead of taking a cynical approach like his British comedian comrades, James Corden believes his only purpose is to spread joy and that entertainers have a responsibility to combat cynicism and spread joy and positivity. But people who dislike Corden find his need to entertain and his chumminess a disingenuous need for the spotlight. When other shows focus on news, Corden's show focuses on musical numbers, fun games, and high concept stunts, a very Ellen-esque approach to talk shows, which people are just becoming disillusioned to. When things are too positive, it can feel insincere, especially in contrast to the year we're having. In fact, I think 2020 has really shown how fake a lot of these positive talk shows are. When you're acting like everything is perfect and positive and you're lovable and joyful in the year that we're currently having when all of this is going on, it becomes a, a little bit much, just a little bit much. You know, like I don't think anyone's buying it anymore. <laughs> James Corden also has a rap for making very unfunny content or being involved in very unfunny projects. Harvey Weinstein wanted to come tonight, but uh, he'll settle for whatever potted plant is closest. <laughs> oh, come on! The thing is, The Late Late Show has a ton of writers, so a lot of what he's saying is just reciting what's already been written for him. James has a teleprompter which of course is standard for any sort of talk show. But when you look at his actual comedy that he's done. It's just a little weird because you didn't leave much of a tip. <laughs> Sorry, what? No tip. Well, that isn't true. I remember leaving, I left a perfectly good tip. I left, I left, yeah, I did, I left $10. Yeah, it was a $340 meal. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that, when you put it like that, it sounds like a bad. <laughs> well, a lot of people just feel like it's not funny. A lot of people feel confused as to why he had such a successful career because they just don't feel that he has any sort of comedic talent. But of course, who am I to judge? I'm a woman. Women aren't funny and neither is James Corden without his team of writers. So I guess we have that in common. Obviously, I'm kidding. James Corden made a name for himself by being involved in the BBC sitcom Gavin and Stacey, which a lot of people were very, very critical of. Corden also broke through to the US market in the 2012 Broadway production of One Man, Two Governors. I, yeah, don't ask me to do an accent. <laughs> but in the US, James Corden's entire brand is built on being the lovable nice guy. But this nice, all positive and loving facade is quickly shattered when you dive a little bit deeper and find that James Corden has a little bit of a mean streak. I want to speak to James here. It is, it's James, isn't it? When the presenters are up here and when the recipients are receiving their awards, don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets, looking around as though you wished you were anywhere but here. Oh, you couldn't be more wrong, sir. You couldn't be more wrong. Oh, genuinely. And if it looked like that, I'm so sorry. But when you come up and present an award, just get on with it. There we go. <laughs> sorry, I'm waiting for the punchline. Go on. No, seriously, go on. 
Okay. No, um, go on. You can see my belly, and we can all see you dying right now. Let's go for it. Here we go. Okay, can we get a taxi ready, please? The old man going home. The winner's Kira Knightley. And this is a bit of a scoop, exclusive and true. I've just been shagging her solid for the last three days. Some of it's sensual, sensual lovemaking, but on the whole, on the whole, quite brutal. But in between sessions, we, um, we made a little film. So we recorded this, and literally the minute we finished taping it, I was hanging out the back of it. That was probably uh, one of the most interesting uh, giving out of an award speeches I've ever heard. Really? What inspired you? It's just truth. <laughs> just, I just thought, you know, everything I do is about truth, so tell it like it is. Are you, you know? slightly annoyed she's not here? No, because then I got to say something funny. <laughs> to making Harvey Weinstein jokes, who he was supposedly friends with. Right here in LA, it's so beautiful, Harvey Weinstein has already asked tonight up to his hotel to give him a massage. <laughs> I don't know whether that groan was that you like that joke or you don't like that joke. If you don't like that joke, you should probably leave now. It has been weird this week though, hasn't it? Watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water Ask any of the women who watched him take a bath. It's weird watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Harvey Weinstein wanted to come tonight, but uh, he'll settle for whatever potted plant is closest. Oh, come on! Yeah, that aged super well. Also, according to this Twitter post, as well as Corden's AMA on Reddit, Corden appeared at a Writers Guild Association meeting to advocate for lower pay for starting writers at a rate that's a barely livable wage for people living in Los Angeles. Others have also come out with stories about Corden being rude and very self-absorbed. I'm going to read them to you guys, but I do want to know a lot of these are personal accounts. So while I think they're important to listen to and take into account, you know, there's always more than one side to this story. James has a teleprompter telling him what to say. I was kind of disappointed that he wasn't just coming up with stuff. You know? I guess I get it. Like, everyone has a teleprompter. And then he's like, wait, stop. And everyone thought he was kidding, so everyone's like, ah, ha, Like, seriously, there's a loud buzzing sound behind me and it needs to stop. Everyone's like, oh, shit, it's being serious. He just seemed like he was kind of annoyed and pissed off. The persona that he had when the cameras weren't filming was completely different than the persona he had when the cameras were filming. I was just really disappointed with how James was a completely different person, which I guess is normal for Hollywood. Why was that so hard to say? You can't expect to, to see someone in person, meet someone in person, and them have be exactly the same as their persona on TV. I completely 100% get it. At the same time, I just feel like we didn't even talk to the audience members. Someone says, massive doo-doo head in person. I saw a league of their own filming live through multiple tantrums over minor things at the production staff with him being incredibly rude to them which made the other regulars seem very awkward, like it was usual. Between each take, the other celebs would be chatting amongst themselves, bantering about, James was glued to his phone. At the end of filming, people got up to go get pictures with James and he massively kicked off, shouting at people to go away and to go back to their seats. And the few he did let have pictures with, he was moody. After we went to a VIP tent as such for a beer, we were guests of people, anonymity for obvious reasons, and the celebs were going to be joining us. The other celebs came in and spoke with people. James came in for a brief moment. Someone asked politely for a quick picture, and he abruptly said later, and then effed off to, I'm guessing, his changing room for the rest of the night as they didn't get their picture before kickout time. Seeing him like that made me realize everything you see on TV is a complete persona. And really, his natural personality is just a self-entitled doo-doo head. This one is a really interesting story. Strap in for the ride. Tales a flying doo-doo head. Tales from the cockpit. Half an hour into a New York to London flight, passengers in a business class noticed a woman with a crying baby being brought through the curtains by a flight attendant 
They looked on in mild horror as they saw the attendant direct her into an empty seat next to James Corden. Expecting a huge celebrity hissy fit to kick off, Corden's cabin mates were impressed to see that he didn't say a word or make any sort of complaint. He simply put on a pair of noise-canceling headphones, pulled an eye mask over his eyes, and turned away from her to sleep. Pretty decent of him, right? When the plane landed, though, passengers were surprised to see Corden remain seated as the woman with the baby struggled to open the overhead locker. And even more surprised when she turned to Corden and said, For F's sake, can you at least hold the baby while I get the bags down? The woman was his wife. The baby was his baby. It's a little M. Night Shyamalan twist to that story. This one is my favorite out of all of the stories because it's written on TripAdvisor. Like someone did a TripAdvisor review for James Corden's show. Amazing. I love it. <laughs> It's also just funny because they're very polite throughout the entire review, even though they had a really horrible experience. The title is James Corden is surprisingly not nice in real life. And this is a review of The Late Late Show with James Corden. Went there with my sister and best friend to watch a show. Tickets were for free and we never were on the audience of a show, so we wanted to experience it. We got priority tickets. They guarantee entry if you are on time. Once you enter, you will get another wristband if they want you to sit in the front, otherwise you will not get one and be seated in the back. We were lucky to get the extra wristband and we were seated on the comfy chairs. The biggest disappointment is that James seems more annoyed than happy with his job. As soon as cameras were off, he checked his mobile, didn't even look at the audience. He got annoyed if something didn't work and showed it. When the audience clapped for too long, he got annoyed and made signs so we stop, or vice versa. After the show, he just left without a word or anything. As soon as the cameras were on, he was great. He has talent, great actor, really. Well put. Arrogant in real life, but so fun in front of the camera. Overall, still worth it as it's interesting to see how it all works. Just don't have high expectations. I went to Jimmy Kimmel and I recently loved it. He's such a genuine guy off camera and interacted with us. So if you have the choice, go to Jimmy. So of course, those are all personal accounts, but a lot of them have a really similar story of him being kind of arrogant, going on his phone, not talking with people, being very abrasive, and then all of a sudden cameras come on and he's that lovable courting guy that we all love to watch and is so positive and all about spreading joy. I think all of these things wouldn't be as bad if it wasn't for this fake persona that he's built around being the funny British nice guy, as well as the entire concept of his show being about spreading joy. Well, it doesn't seem like you spread very much joy to your audience members. But I wouldn't say that's the thing that upsets me the most about James Corden. The thing that upsets me the most, I'd say, about James Corden is how much of a blatant sellout he is and has always been. He's such a sellout that it's to the point where he compromises moral and ethical standards. As bad as Ellen is, she's never been the host of a conference for a freaking pyramid scheme. So let's talk about the top moments when Corden has really sold his soul for some Hollywood money. Of course, there's his show, one of the safest bubblegum shows out there, meant to just be comforting and safe for anyone to view. In my opinion, although I'm not a complete stan of the show, so it's totally fine if you feel differently, I kind of feel like James Corden's show, The Late Late Show, is really only meant to bring big celebrity names on, which will get them all of the views, and just simply entertain the audience, not really challenge them or engage them or discuss important topics. It's just kind of blatant entertainment. There's nothing wrong with that because entertainment sells and it's safe. I mean, The Late Late Show is literally just a carbon copy of The Ellen Show with a few original segments added in, like carpool karaoke, we gotta love it, right? All of our favorites are singing, but it's just them in the car with James Corden and oh look, he has a great voice too. We love it. 
Oh, another carpool karaoke? I'm, I'm so excited. Yay. No, it never gets boring. It never does. When James Corden was first offered to do the show, he declined and negotiated to get a better deal with more money. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. You should always negotiate your worth. You should always get paid your worth. Oh, well, well, that is, of course, unless you're one of Corden's writers, in which you should barely get enough wage to survive. I also just have to mention, it really seems like James Corden will take any sort of speaking event that pays. He's been the host of a lot of shows or events and had some really strange monologues. I wanted to note really quickly, I think I stumbled upon this completely by accident when I was looking up photos of James Corden for the thumbnail. And I don't know how legit this is. Like, I don't want to say it's 100% legit, but I found a website called CAA Speakers that supposedly is a site where you can hire James Corden to speak. And it gives an entire biography of him, reviews that people have submitted, and also apparently has other really well-known figures that are speakers as well. So that's really interesting. Last of all, and worst of all, JC was the MC for Monations, where he delivered really cringy and unfunny monologues and the most basic unfunny jokes. Monate makes the best products for both humans and pets. They work just as well on your chocolate lab or your great aunt Babs, your cocker spaniel or your cousin Daniel, your German shepherd or your grandpa Leonard. Your Bison Fries or your sister Denise, your short haired Tabby or your grandma Gabby, your great Dane or your beloved actor Nathan Lane. Okay, I shouldn't have done the last one. It was really hard to find clips of this for whatever reason. I don't know. I might just not be looking in the right places online. But I finally found someone who was filming this monologue for Facebook and every time he makes an extremely cheesy joke, they just crack up and the whole thing has me cringing so hard. And of course we have to congratulate tonight's biggest winner, yeah. alcohol. Here's the thing, <laughs> you've already won an award tonight, do what I did after I have ever won an award. Uh, be sure to post on Facebook, tag your high school ex who dumped you right before prom, do it, you've earned it. It's a real honor to be recognized by your peers I should know, I mean, when I'm at an award show, I get tons of recognition. You know, people come up and go, hey, great job, Jimmy Fallon, and you know what? That's enough. But sincerely, what you have here is amazing. In my family, no one ever celebrated anyone's success. Why do you think I chose a job where people applaud me when they're told to every single night? <laughs> the funniest part of all is as he's talking, you can see how dead his eyes are. Like you're gazing into these soulless eyes and I feel like he just knows how pathetic this all is, but he just couldn't resist the paycheck. If you didn't know, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, Monate is one of the worst companies to ever exist. I did an entire video on their BS hand sanitizer charity, which in my opinion was a complete scam. They've also had lawsuits filed against them for their hair products causing hair loss. They can't even do the one thing they're supposed to do, which is make your hair look good or at least stay on your head. And recently, Monet has gotten into even more legal trouble with the Florida Attorney General. But worst of all, Monet operates in a way that's similar to a pyramid scheme. Eerily similar. One could say almost identical. So basically, most of the people who are selling the Monet products are really the customers and 99% of people in the Monet company will lose money. On top of that, they use cult-like practices. I mean, you you have reason enough to believe now that it's a bad business, right? I, do I have to go on? Because I can, but we would be here for a while. But apparently James Corden just does not seem to care about this at all. 
All of this is very easy information that can very easily be found on the internet. There's tons of videos on this. And when celebrities like James Corden promote or appear to promote companies that have horrible unethical business practices, it causes problems. It makes that business look legitimate. It makes it look like a legitimate real business and add to the credibility of a company. So as a celebrity, when you promote such a scammy business and appear as the face of their entire event, it does so much damage to the people who are trapped into this MLM company and are losing money. But oh, James Corden endorsed it. So this must be a legit business opportunity. I have to keep going. I have to keep buying thousands of products. That's what James Corden would want. The fact that James Corden just really doesn't care about any of this and is so involved with a company that has hurt so many people is really just the straw that broke the camel's back and made me lose all respect for him. Sorry, not sorry. So that's really all I have today regarding James Corden. I hope that this was all eye-opening for you guys. It really seems like the facade of these nice talk show hosts who are really just only out for themselves is starting to fade away. And I'm really happy about that, actually. I think it's for the betterment of humanity. My heart stands with only one talk show host, and that's John Oliver, and no one will ever tear us apart.